Real estate is a great place to park money and avoid the constant volatility of the stock market. Owning a tangible asset is reassuring in a world where money can seem like just number on a screen. There are also great tax advantages associated with owning property, and the fact that you can leverage money to purchase appreciating assets provides the opportunity for huge returns. That leaves the question of whether or not to rent your property on a long or short term basis. Demand for short term rentals continues to rise as people prefer a larger, private space to a hotel room, but a long term tenant can provide steady income for you to pay the mortgage and other bills. If you're debating whether it would be better to invest in a traditional long term rental or a short term rental, consider the pros and cons so you can make an informed decision. If you enjoy videos about money, personal finance, and investing, all topics that will help you better your financial future, Consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notification icon to be notified of new videos. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. Many of those who own short term rentals purchase it as an investment that they could also use when it's available. They can rent the place out to people during peak season and have it for their own personal enjoyment when it's not rented. Or it can be used for personal enjoyment and rented occasionally to help offset the costs. You can decide as much or as little as you'd like it rented. This is a huge perk because there's no chance of being able to use a property that's rented on a long term basis unless it's being turned over for the next tenant. As common as buying a place to rent it and use it is, sometimes a more favorable option is to focus on purchasing income generating assets unrelated to your vacation spots. The money generated can then be used to stay somewhere else when you go on vacation. Doing this allows you to choose other destinations instead of being confined to only the spots where you own. Also, it helps keep work and play separate so you're not cleaning and performing maintenance when you're trying to get away in vacation. This is by far the single largest advantage to renting short term. It generates higher income. By renting to vacationers, owners are able to charge a higher price and earn greater cash flow than they would by renting to locals. People can afford to and don't mind paying a higher price for a few nights. Long term renters wouldn't pay the same nightly rate if they were staying for a longer period. A property rented on a short term basis can generate three, four, or five times the income compared to a long term arrangement. The profit from operating a vacation rental can be significantly higher while offering the benefits of owning in a more desirable area, such as on the coast, mountains, or lakefront, locations that commonly don't make sense for long term rentals. When it's purchased right, one single short term rental can provide a full time income even after paying the mortgage payment, maintenance, taxes, and all related expenses. That's unheard of with a long-term rental property unless it's a multifamily with many units. On the other hand, long-term rentals generate more consistent income because the tenant occupies the property for much longer periods. There's no need to worry about what next month's income will look like during the slow season. If the economy takes a turn for the worse, the rent will most likely continue, further adding to the stability. People always need a place to live, but a recession can be a nightmare for an owner dependent on others' vacationing habits. When someone says passive income, real estate is one of the things that comes to mind. Once you sign a lease and place a long term tenant, there's not much work to do. The bills need to be paid, the grass needs to be cut, and maybe an occasional issue needs to be addressed, but there's really not much else that regularly needs to be done. You could even hire a property manager to do all those things for you and only be charged a 10 or 20% fee. This is quite the opposite of running a short term rental, which is very much an active business. Think of it like running a hotel with cleaners, check ins and check outs, changing light bulbs, restocking soap and paper goods, and dealing with guest complaints. Managing a cleaner can be a big hassle, especially if the property isn't located nearby. How will you ensure the cleaning job has been done to you and your guest satisfaction? If you choose to hire a manager to take care of these ongoing duties, expect to pay up to 50% of your gross income and then tack on more money for paying cleaners and maintenance people. Even with the higher income received from the short stays, those management costs will leave you with little or no profit. Short-term properties need to be furnished with everything, down to utensils, cookware, and usually bedding and paper goods. Maintaining the furniture can be an issue, especially if you're not local. Who's going to replace a coffee table when someone sits on it and breaks it? Will you be able to dispose of it and replace the table before the next guests check in on the same or next day? Stains on couches, dents in wood, and stains on mattresses are inevitable, and those items aren't cheap, which can be a drawback when starting out on a limited budget. Long-term renters almost always bring their own furniture, removing that variable from the equation. 
Long-term rentals have the potential for attracting a disrespectful, non-paying tenant who is nearly impossible to evict, sometimes damaging the property on the way out. The single hassle of dealing with that type of renter is enough to scare many people away from investing in real estate. A deadbeat tenant could destroy your income for an entire year or more as you go through the eviction process and restore the property afterwards. Short-term renters, while not always the most courteous, pay for their stay ahead of time with most booking sites, so there's no need to worry about collecting the payment. And the third party provides some type of insurance to protect both the owner and renter. There's still the possibility of them refusing to leave, but that's uncommon. Also, there's a good chance they have discretionary income and are on vacation, and that alone tends to bring more respectful guests. Owners generally have less ongoing maintenance with a long-term rental. Tenants will take care of things like light bulbs, smoke detector batteries, and possibly lawn maintenance. However, frequent turnovers of vacationers allow you to stay on top of cleaning and maintenance. The property will be thoroughly cleaned in between each renter, and they have to be maintained to a high standard. More frequent turnover also makes it easier to identify small maintenance issues before they become a problem. You can stay on top of things like paint touch-ups and carpet cleaning. When a long-term tenant leaves, expect to do deep cleaning, painting, and possibly even replacing the flooring. This could take weeks, meaning lost revenue instead of having these things done in between short-term renters. Regulations for rentals are different everywhere depending on your local rules and the homeowners association, if you have one. Many properties are restricted from doing short-term rentals, usually because the neighbors don't want a revolving door of random people next door having back-to-back parties. However, even long-term renters aren't guaranteed to be pleasant. Even though it's common, Some areas allow short-term rentals but restrict or ban long-term. Be sure to do your research to ensure you're allowed to rent the property the way you intend. Stay up to date with association and local government meetings and be aware of potential renting rule changes. Regulations are constantly changing with many areas banning or restricting short-term rentals. Have a plan in place if this were to happen in your area. The good news for those wishing to rent short-term is that with all the booking platforms available, the process is relatively seamless. The owner can usually restrict the number of guests, insist on quiet time curfews, and insist on no parties. That doesn't mean it won't be without its headaches, though. Expect a significant amount of management work in dealing with guest issues, but those cons must be weighed with the income potential and the pitfalls associated with traditional landlording. If you have the time and energy to run a short-term rental business, it can be very profitable. But, If you're looking for passive income and the ability to scale, traditional long-term running is usually better, despite the lower profit. Those tenants will be happy to have a well-maintained property, and they'll be easier to please.